Hi everybody. Welcome to Vijasa Foundation. My name is Manav Swaminathan and today I am going to talk about IME and the DME list in pharmacovigilance. What does IME stand for? IME stands for Important Medical Events. And what does DME stands for? DME stands for Designated Medical Event. Before learning about these in detail, we should revise our understanding about the seriousness criteria in pharmacovigilance. So what are, what are the various seriousness criteria? The first one is disability. That a patient takes the medicine and then develops some kind of a disability. Right? The second seriousness criteria is hospitalization. It can be initial or prolonged. The patient takes the medicine and has an adverse event that results in hospitalization. Or else the patient is already in the hospital takes the medicine and as a result the hospital stay gets prolonged. So this is one seriousness criteria. The next seriousness criteria is life threatening. Right? The patient takes the medicine is and is on the verge of dying. Right? So this is life threatening as a seriousness criteria. The next seriousness criteria is fatality. Adverse events can at times result in death of the patient. The next seriousness criteria is congenital anomalies. You remember thalidomide disaster, right? Where the mother took thalidomide and the children were born with seal limbs or short limbs. Please remember one thing that it is not only the mother, it can even be the father who can take the medicine and as a result there can be congenital anomalies in the child. And the final seriousness criteria is medically significant. And this is where IME and DME lists play a very very important role. So as I told you IME is important medical event and DME is designated medical event. We will learn about these in detail. First, let us learn about the IME list. So, this IME list is coordinated by the Udra Vigilance Expert Working Group. And they make updates to the list twice every year. With every release of the new Metra version, we have a new IME list. So the purpose for having this list is solely for guidance. Please remember this. It is only for referral or it is only for guidance. Also, there is a document I will be showing you in some time which talks about the inclusion and exclusion criteria for the important medical events. And finally, we can even share comments on the list. So if we have any comment on any of the adverse events or IME, we can share the comments with the Yotra Vigilance team. So we even have that option. I'll show you all these things in detail. Then what is DME list? Right? So the DME list is published only for transparency purpose. The last update was made in June 2020. So this is primarily for the events which are very likely to be causally associated with the drug. So that's something which you should always remember. And it also acts like a safety net so that companies don't miss out on important signals. And finally it is non-definitive. Please remember. And this can change with more and more information being available. So that is something which you should remember. Now I'll be showing you the demo. I'll also the websites through which you'll be able to find the uh, DMA list. But then before that I wanted to tell you something that uh, there is a lot of scope for automation in case of IME and the DMA list. I'll give an example. 
that you have a safety database and uh, you also know that the IME list gets published every year, that to twice every year and also you have a reference a DMA list. What if you integrate these events into the safety database? If this happens, then it becomes very easy because whenever you include any term which is in the IME list, the database can by default capture it to be serious. So that is one thing which you can do. So that is why there is some scope of automation. So what I will now do is I will show you the demonstration. So this is the website where you can get the information about the IMA list. So if you, I will be sharing all the links uh, below. So here, here if you see, you have an option to download the latest IME list. I have already done that for you, I will just show you. So here is the list where uh, the last Metro upgrade was 25.0 and on 8th of March, the European Medicines Agency came up with the latest IME list. right? So you can find all the terms out here and also there is a comment. And if so, there is something which was recently added in the new version of Metro Upgrade, then even that you can find that in the section, in the column E, right? You can see here, uh, which is added in 25.0. So you can go through this list and you'll be able to find all the IME terms. The next thing which I would like to talk about is the designated medical events. So here there is a list of almost around 61, 62 terms and uh, these are always considered serious and uh, very likely to be signals. So that is why very, very important. And here you can see that the list was last updated on 15th June 2020. So, and you can see the list out here, the 61 or 62 adverse events. These are necessarily the preferred terms. Same thing even applies to the IME, where all of the terms are the uh, preferred terms. Right? Then, I, I spoke about the questions. So, if you have any questions on the IME list, here is a link. I'll share the link as well below. So, here is a link where you can share your comments on the IME list that uh, a particular event, why it is considered serious or why do you think it is not, not supposed to be considered serious, you can always do that and you can send the question to the European Medicines Agency. Apart from this, I told you about the inclusion-exclusion criteria. So this is a document which is again published by the European Medicines Agency. And it talks about the inclusion and exclusion criteria for the important medical events list. So very useful document. I'll share this link as well below. Uh, you can always go through all of this. Uh, again, I would like to tell you one thing that uh, whenever you are processing the case in the safety database, uh, you may at time feel that whether the event should be considered serious or not. So that is where the IMA list can be very useful to you. So you can always use that as a reference. And again, medical reviews judgment overrules everything. But still, uh, this acts as a very good guidance document. I trust you found uh, the session to be very useful. Feel free to contact us if you have any comments, questions or suggestions. Thank you and have a nice day.